Hi guys, it's Juliette and welcome back to my channel. I'm really, really excited today because I got back from Paris and I want to share with all of you guys how I brought back all my luxury goods that you can see in this video here back from Paris to my home in LA and as well as how I prepared for the trip in terms of packing so that I could carry all this in my suitcases. And then I'll talk a little bit about the US customs process as well as the VAT refund process. I do have an unboxing coming up as you guys can see and I I will say this because I know like you guys are probably dying to see what I got. I did get two Hermes quota bags which is absolutely insane, insane that I got both of these in France. So I'm just feeling super blessed and grateful and Honestly, I personally have been dying to unbox these because I want to use them. And even though I had them, you know, unboxed before, I didn't use them because I would always, always wait until after my video to start using my bags. Uh, except for one of them. I did use it in France, one of them. But yeah, oh, I'm so excited for you guys to see this. It truly, truly, truly makes me so happy to share this with you guys and obviously to like use these purchases. Maybe not next video, but the video after that, I'll show you the full story on how I scored two Hermes quota bags. And I keep saying that because I'm still in disbelief and I'm just like, wow, I just genuinely am in shock still. So now we're going to get started with a video where I'll show you guys all my suitcases and how I went through the packing process. So this is everything that we brought back from Paris and I'm going to go into detail into what was fully packed and what wasn't fully packed and what we checked and didn't check. Okay, so this is the first backpack that was completely empty and stuffed into our check bag, but then we filled it up. So on the way back from Paris. So this had macaroons up top that we got to give to friends and family that we already gave out. And here we have just a neck pillow. And then here is um, one of the Hermes boxes, um, the only one that's in here. And this is actually for a pair of shoes. But what we did is we stuffed in additional Hermes boxes in here. So I haven't done my unboxing video, so I'm not gonna pull those out yet. But this is, as you can see, what I got from Hermes. So I just kind of filled in the spaces where I could. So that was stuffed into this bag here. So then next up over here, this was filled to the brim with my clothes. So we transferred half of my clothes to the big checked bag. And then what I did here is I actually rolled up my clothing around the bag. Like I never really roll my clothes given I don't want it to get wrinkled or anything like that. But on the way back, I don't care because I'm going to clean all this, but I just rolled it like that. And that way everything fit a little bit more compact. And also I liked it so that this wasn't shifting around in the bag. So this is one Hermes quota bag. You can see how deep it is here. And the unfortunate part is that actually through customs, they made me unbox it. So that was pretty sad. I'm going to have to unbox, um, retie this and then unbox it on camera and can't say that I'll perfectly tie this well for that, but yeah, that's why things are already undone for the most part because not only did I have to go through Paris, um, you know, that refund where they made me uh, show them the bag, but also US Customs as well. Okay, so here we have my Birkin bag. Um, I'll just show you guys this, but I'm pretty sure there's really nothing in here. Whenever I travel with this, I bring the dust bag, but I always make this logo face my side so that nobody really notices it as much. And then what I put in here, sorry for all the dust, but what I put in here was just a bunch of the uh, VAT refund forms that I got and receipts from Hermes in here. So that's pretty much it. It was just more for easy access when I was going through customs to have all that there and ready for them. And actually, yeah, this is how I travel with it. I actually don't use the felt protector, which I probably should, but yeah, I was actually using this as a bag a ton, so I didn't really see the need for it. Okay, so then on this side, we have more clothing and then I stored Hermes bags here. So I actually really love to bring back Hermes bags when I can. So we have one bag here and then actually we do have a really large shopping bag as well that's in the check bag. It's just tucked back here. We just folded it a bit so you can see that here. And then these are all my dresses that I brought. 
so there we go then over here we have my dior tote so as you can see here we put a it's a henry bendel dust bag that i have um that was actually one of my first totes i ever bought was henry bendel in in new york so i kept that dust bag though i don't have that tote bag anymore given i just wore it to death but anyway i use it now to make the dior tote a bit more discreet when i travel and I put that over it. And then inside here is an Hermes quota bag. What I stuffed in the side pockets were perfume and a bunch of other um, samples that the sales associate gave me in Paris. Yeah, just a ton of like makeup samples that's all stuffed in the side pockets. Also, I had, I believe, oh, my wallet in here. And actually there's one other thing. So we did have a quick layover in New York, like a couple hours. So there was a another Hermes box here. It's an Hermes silk scarf box, which is pretty thin. So I um, ended up giving that to my mom on the layover. So you could imagine one other box here, pretty thin, so that was fine. But anyway, when we traveled, and actually before I show you how we traveled, this was only halfway filled. So if you think about it, this is only halfway filled with like makeup bags and, um, and a hair tool and a hairbrush. So this actually fit inside of it, not completely, but you know, enough that the handles of the Birkin was like similar to the handles over here sticking out. When you come back from Paris, you have to go through, I mean, you don't have to, but you want to get your VAT refund, you line up there. And given everyone there has really nice, expensive goods, it's just, you don't want to stand out when you leave that line and you go to your uh, gate. So what we did is we just want to hide this orange box from sticking out because it's the only one that wasn't um, in a fully closed, you know, either suitcase or in a backpack. And what we did was we actually took Dan's, I believe, like a light long sleeve shirt and we stuffed his long sleeve shirt up here. And then, I mean, it doesn't, you know, help that that much given the Dior handles, you can kind of notice them a little bit, but we went like that, which I know will probably make people kind of cringe because of the handles. Uh, but for us, in terms of safety, I was totally okay with kind of having the handles like be a little bit like that just so that everything can remain pretty closed. And then we would just go like that and then carry it like this. So we weren't really even tugging on the handles themselves. So that's pretty much how we packed everything. And I'm happy with the way we packed. So I guess my biggest tip would be to, if you're gonna travel to your to France in the hopes of buying a lot of goods, like regardless of the store, I feel like you should travel with one big checked bag that you fill halfway up or, you know, as little as possible. And that will be the bag to compensate for the other two carry-ons that you could stuff all your personal goods into that check bag so that your two carry-ons or one carry-on is solely devoted to whatever you buy in Paris. And then I also do recommend you know, having a tote bag, because I think tote bags are just so wonderful to overfill with whatever you want. And in this case, it could carry, you know, a big box like this. So that's pretty much how we did it. Um, and I think that's probably how we'll always travel. Okay, so now that you guys saw how I packed my bag to and from Paris, now we're gonna get into the VAT refund process. I always get a lot of questions around this and I wanna explain uh, my experience going through it. So when you first um, get to the Paris airport, you will go to a VAT refund area. And there, there's like a kiosk. A lot of luxury stores give you this piece of paper that has a barcode on it that you scan. And it will let you know immediately, you know, whether the VAT was scanned and there's nothing else you need to do or whether you need to go for an in-person manual VAT refund. So I think the way this process works is that the kiosk really works well for those um, luxury goods that are not too expensive. I don't know what the threshold is, but I personally believe if you're buying handbags that are you know, more than $1,000, I'm pretty sure the kiosk is gonna tell you to go talk to an officer and get online to go speak to them about the VAT refund. So uh, for us, uh, we had to go talk to the officer because our two receipts were quite hefty given I got two bags from Hermes. And so we went online 
Uh, this actually was quite quick of a process because nobody was really online when we were online. When we first got there, I think there were only two people in front of us. But by the time, you know, we were ready to get to the officer to speak with them, the line was fully packed with everyone, like probably like 10 people in line. I would highly recommend to get to the airport at least like an extra 30 to 45 minutes earlier than you would have planned for to go through the VAT refund process if you bought like luxury handbags that you think will get flagged for discussion with an officer. So by the time it was our turn, we went to go speak to an officer. We gave him both of our receipts that we had gotten from the store. And when I say receipts, I don't actually mean the store receipts, I actually mean the VAT, uh, the VAT refund form. So we gave the officer both of those two uh, forms because we only did two separate Hermes shopping trips. and he essentially inspected the form and then said exactly what he wanted to see. So we had to open up our suitcase to show him. And this is something that is, you know, for me, I feel like I was like, oh, a little sad about because I had to unbox a lot of the goods without filming it. And I know that's like a minor thing, but I hadn't filmed one of my bags yet. So it doesn't matter because I'm, I'm redoing that unboxing given I got two Hermes bags. But essentially be prepared to unbox um, whatever you bought. They're not going to have you unbox everything. Maybe they will. But in my case, they typically just want to see the two, whatever the largest purchases are. So uh, in this case, it was my two handbags that they physically wanted to see. So I had to take this out completely and I had to take this one out completely. And uh, we actually went off to the side, so uh, when you're facing the officer, like he's facing you, but there's a little place off to the side so you can open your suitcase um, on the side, which I recommend. You'll see it when you're staring facing the officer, you could just go off to the side and there's like another counter there. That's how we discreetly disclose what we were um, buying, just because I'm just very more aware of my surroundings given all the robberies going on in, you know, generally speaking so i feel like for me and my husband we want to feel very safe by just disclosing everything in a very discreet manner and then after that there's literally nothing else you have to do like they do everything on their end all we had to do is show them the two bags that i bought and the two vat refund forms and he said nothing else you're good so essentially the money that we would get back from the vat refund would go directly to our credit cards so the vat that you know the tax actually for these two Hermes purchases were each um, 20% and I believe we get back around like 10% in terms of a refund and I haven't gotten the VAT refund back just yet so I'll confirm that once I do but typically I think it takes around like two weeks to get the VAT refund back and then once that's done we kind of you know package everything together and then went to our gate and through security. So then on the way back, you have to declare to the U.S. Um, you know, customs the goods that you bought. And typically you don't have to do this if you're buying like small souvenirs, like $100. But in our case, of course, we spent a lot of money. So I, I knew we would have to declare. So we were going through the part where you're literally exiting, you know, it says, you know, the U.S. Customs part, right? And you're exiting and typically they have you fill out a form on the plane. But in our scenario, we did not have to fill out a form on the plane, which was weird. And we actually had a layover in New York before we got back to L.A. So we were coming back and then the officer, the U.S. officer said, oh, do you have any like, did you buy, what did you buy? while you were gone and we told them oh you got two, we got two bags we got you know and like other small like goods and he was like okay yeah you're good and we looked to the left and there was like this like US like customs like sign and then there was a room and a ton of people sitting in it which I thought was surprising because it was a lot of people and I think the last time we had gone through the US customs it wasn't that many people so we were like oh my god it's so many people but anyway he was like, oh, you're good, which I was like, no, we're not good because I know we have to declare. So he said that and I had a confused face and my husband was like, does that mean we don't have to declare? I'm very confused. So I was like, no, we need to declare. So I kind of looked around to see if like I could talk to some other officer that kind of knew what was going on. So another um, a woman officer came up to me and she's like, oh, can I help you with something? And I said, yeah, like we just talked to the other officer and he said, we told him we got two bags and we needed to declare. 
and she was like oh, okay yeah yeah how much are they and I told her how much they are and so she was like oh, okay yeah um, you do have to declare for something like that so then she actually took us to it's actually the part of the airport like where you're about to leave after you get your baggage claim so you're passing that US Customs like you know office area where everyone's sitting but instead she took us like to the part where right before you leave and she said she took my passport and she was like okay you can meet with the officer um, right there who you know as you're leaving typically ask you like questions like oh like additional questions like I think I saw him ask another guy like where are you traveling from so anyway we waited for the rest of our bags because she told us to wait for the rest of our bags before we met with the other officer and we actually asked her if we could meet with the officer before the other bags because I already had all the expensive goods that I bought in my carry-on and she said nope they're gonna want to have all the bags ready so I was like kind of concerned I was like are we gonna have to go through every single detail of our luggage because it's just a lot of um work and we had a layover and we had to catch another flight but anyway we finally got our bags saw the other u.s officer who's again all these officers are very serious and he's like you know if you don't declare you would lose your global entry status since my husband and i both have global entry and i was kind of concerned because i wanted him to know that we did not try to like bypass this like we knew we had to declare so i was like oh no i spoke to the woman officer we actually were telling her that we needed to declare even though the other officer said we didn't need to and he's like oh no i know that you guys actually were trying to declare i'm just telling you just like just generally speaking the repercussions because um some people try not to declare and i was like okay good and he's like yeah no we really really appreciate your honesty and i'm going to take care of you so essentially he told us to fill out the form that typically you fill out that in the airplane and there we just listed out all the items that we bought basically like recopying the VAT refund form and the pricing and he said don't worry about being specific just give rough estimates and uh, we did that and it didn't have to be exact names or anything like that just like rough you know description and then after we filled out that form he said okay like is that it and I was like yes that's it and he goes okay um, if you guys are telling the truth, like, I'm just going to quickly take a quick search of the bags, then you should be all set and good and fine. And I was like, okay. I was like, what does that mean? He's like, well, if I don't find, like, any, like, Cartier jewelry in here, like, he was joking. I mean, kind of serious. And I was like, no, no, like, we just had two Hermes, you know, receipts, and these are it. So he did take a look at our bags. He did ask me to pull open like a few more items, which is why some of these I retied, like my my shoes I showed him. And then um, again, I showed him, actually no, this time I didn't show my bags. So I think I showed him shoes and uh, basically I showed him proof of, I was carrying my Birkin that I previously had because I just wanted to show him like on my Instagram, like the old date and he's like, okay, good. And after he, you know, he didn't really check in too much detail. He just kind of looked around more so than reopening a lot of the boxes. Um, then after that, he was like, okay, yeah, like nothing else here. That's great. Um, and then he said, okay, like I am going to just give you um, a tax of like like 2% uh, tax, which is really, really great. And he told, I, I, at this point, like I asked him because I was like just so grateful but I wanted to ask him more about the process and I go like just wondering like if someone didn't declare like what would happen and he was like you know for instance in your case like let's say I taxed you a thousand dollars on all your goods because he's like it's really up to me how much I tax you uh, but given you were so honest I want to give you a good break he was like you know let's say I gave you a thousand dollar tax but then um, or I'm supposed to give you a thousand dollar tax but I find out other things, I could tax you up to five times more. So then that'd be like a $5,000 tax. And he said that happens, you know, a good amount. A lot of times, like he'll see people trying not to declare. And then he'll like, when he notices that people are trying not to declare something, he'll give them a big penalty like that. Uh, which I thought was interesting because I was wondering if he was going to say if he would like confiscate the goods, which he didn't say. But obviously, like, it's still horrible. Like, first of all, you should never not declare I never ever think that's a good idea. Um, the both times that I've declared in the US, both times with Hermes purchases, I've gotten great tax breaks just by being honest because I think I think a lot of people aren't honest and then you know they obviously find them. Also, he did mention that like especially like um, not all the time, but like the you know in France, they'll actually send over like the VAT refund forms 
or I don't know if it's specifically the foreigners, but they'll let them know in the U.S. Customs, you know, the people that have like big purchases that are coming through so that they make sure to pick them out of the crowd and then make sure to tax them. So if they're not being honest, they're going to catch them and then penalize them even more. So anyway, I just want to share that with you guys because I never think it's a good idea not to declare and I've declared both times and have been really, really happy with the result. But even if I didn't get a break, I'd still be very happy because honestly, it's just the right thing to do. So then after that, he kind of like, we closed everything up and then I was on my way out and um, on to the next flight and that was it. So I personally at first thought like maybe we could declare when we were in LA, but it's the first point of entry back into the country that you declare. And um, yeah, I guess my only recommendation for you guys is to be aware of the fact that be ready to show them specifically the goods at random that they're gonna wanna see. And also be honest because that's just like the most important thing and that's what I think they value. So hopefully you guys gained a lot of knowledge from this video. I know a lot of people have a ton of questions around it and if I didn't answer any question that you have, let me know and I'll see if I could do a part two of this video or I'll just answer it directly in the comments below. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I really hope you guys give it a big thumbs up. I enjoy sharing my knowledge with you guys on travel so I'll try to do a few more travel videos as well. And be sure to hit that subscribe button for more luxury videos. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.